In this video, we'll learn how to create an animatic for your animation, both the animated visuals and the audio, such as voice acting and sound effects. Let's get to it. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome back to the How to Create an Animation series. Last episode we learned how to create a character design and turnaround for our animations. So if you haven't watched that yet, you can do so here. If you have watched it, awesome. Today we'll talk about animatics. You can think of an animatic as halfway between a storyboard and an animation. Whilst a storyboard helps rough out the ideas of what shots to use, an animatic helps tie down the acting, timing, transitions, audio, and other elements that can't be conveyed easily or accurately without motion. There are a few things you need before you get started with your animatic, so let's get those out of the way first. As an animatic should include sound and dialogue, etc., you'll need to record any of your character's lines ahead of time. If you're doing it yourself, here are some tips. Get a good quality mic, or if you're using the mic on your phone or something of lesser quality, try to pad the environment around it with blankets, pillows, soundproofing to reduce the echo in the room. Don't get too close or too far away from your mic. Too close and you'll blow out the audio or get popping on your consonant sounds. Toast, toast, like this, toasty. Too far away and it'll be too quiet and the audio will pick up echoes from the room. Like this. Isn't it echoey? I was always taught the shaka technique or shaka technique. Throw up a shaka and put your mouth on the thumb and pinky on the mic and use that to measure the distance or about 15 centimeters if you want to be specific. Record several takes even if you think you got it down on the first try and make sure to warm up. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. My dog has fleas. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. The human torch was denied a bank loan. Okie dokie. I guarantee your later takes will nine times out of ten be better than your earlier ones. Mmm, Timmy. Oh yes, Timmy, young Timothy. Okay, Timmy, enjoy your bath. Don't splash around too much. Don't splash around too much. Don't splash around too much. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, grow your own dino, friend. Just add water. Just add water. His name will be Mr. Snunky. I shall call him Mr. Snunky. His name will be Mr. Snunky. Ah. <coughs> Whee! Oh, Mr. Snunky! <laughs> Mr. Snunky! Mr. Snunky! It's voice acting, not voice acting. Act with your whole body and your audience will feel the emotion. Just look at the masters at work like Alan Tudyk. I went to Julia. Or Mark Hamill. It's that time again! Thanks for tuning in! Get ready for another round of newbies! I'm your host, The Joker. Once you've got your voice lines recorded, scour your script for any additional sound effects you might need. You can always come back and add more later as you tie down your animatic, but it's good to have the basic ones at hand so it doesn't slow you down. Sites like freesound.org are good for the generic things, and even YouTube Audio Library has some decent stuff these days. But other times, doing your own Foley is the best option. Once you've got all those sounds banked, you can start looking at your animatic. The techniques explained in this tutorial can be applied to any animation software, so we won't be talking specifics, but I'll be using Adobe Animate for the examples. You can use your animation software of choice. We'll just do one sequence in detail here, then I'll explain my thoughts as we time lapse the rest. But there's basically two important things to focus on when making an animatic getting the timing right, and getting the acting right. Your animatic, like your storyboard, doesn't have to be beautiful or detailed, but it should have enough information in it to tie down every major aspect of your animation. Obviously, there'll be refinements and tweaks later on, but they'll be informed by the storyboard and animatic. Let's take this first simple sequence from scene two, shot one, to scene two, shot five. We've got an environment introduction, some basic motion, a camera transition, some dialogue, and lip sync. 
So let's go through these one by one, which should cover most scenarios for your own scripts. It's always nice to have some parallaxing in your backgrounds, i.e. things closer to the camera move quicker and things further away move slower. There's more on how that works in this video here. So you should layer your backgrounds in order to allow for this parallaxing effect. Here we have the sink and toilet in the foreground, bath in the midground, and wall slash window in the background. If you bring these into your animation software of choice as three separate objects, you can layer them and animate them separately in order to give your scene some depth. This also allows you to move things around later with much greater ease as there'll be no missing background chunks behind each object. For basic motion, you'll need to tie down the timing and the acting. In this shot, Timmy needs to notice the toy and grab it down from the shelf. Then we transition inwards. To get the timing right, you could try acting out the actions in real life and timing them. But remember, animation is about exaggeration, so you don't need to stick to it exactly. You should also only draw the key frames, or for complicated motion, perhaps the extreme frames too. Which, if you don't know what that means, you can watch my 12 principles episode on the subject. But basically, it means the best drawings that tell the story, and the frames at either end of a motion. So for this one, probably Timmy in the bath, Timmy notices the toy, reaching out for it, and bringing it back into the bath. For each frame, make sure that Timmy is conveying his excitement through posture, facial expression, etc. You might add some bouncing to each frame to reinforce the fact that he's moving with a lot of energy. Space these frames out according to the timing that you feel is right. For camera transitions, you've got a few options. Most of the time using the inbuilt camera tool in your animation software will work for basic zooms and pans, but something I like to do is a whip zoom, where your characters morph and distort over a very quick transition, which adds a bit of comedic value. For this, I like to anticipate the transition with a basic eased in zoom. This will then transition to a warped frame, often for just a single frame, then a basic eased out zoom on the new background. To achieve this simply and quickly in the animatic stage, I just use a combination of the radial blur, twirl and pinch filters in Photoshop, but more on that when we get to the backgrounds episode. Combining these techniques makes for a nice quick and dirty whip zoom transition, with of course a supporting sound effect. Finally, for dialogue and lip sync, the important thing is not to sync too much time into it during the animatic stage. Don't worry about getting an accurate lip sync. Instead, focus on the key emotive frames that get the character's overall motion and dialogue vibe down. Here, Timmy just moves the toy a bit closer to his face. His eyes widen and pupils grow in wonder. A few simple key phonemes or mouth shapes will convey everything you need to know about the shot. Remember, Animatics are functional, not beautiful. Beautiful comes later. Focus on the emotion and information of your shot. Get your characters acting correctly by emphasizing or exaggerating poses or emotion, and worry about the complicated lip sync later on. Add the sound effects, such as splashing water, after the dialogue, as the dialogue is the most important thing to get right, and the sound effects are just a supporting element. Let's look at all of that put together. Ooh. Grow your own dino, friend. Just add water. Okay, looking great. Those techniques cover every other shot in this animation, so I'll just explain my other thought processes with a quick time lapse, and we can watch the finished animatic. So, here I am inside of Adobe Animate, and the first and most important thing to say is that um, if you've drawn something well in your storyboard and you're struggling to draw it again for your animatic, there's nothing wrong with going back and just tracing what you did in your storyboard. You'll notice me do that a few times during this time lapse because I just can't get it right. Like here, for example, I bring in Timmy, I trace his head and I trace the box because I was happy with the way it was drawn. Now, in some softwares you won't actually have to trace, you can use the um, images you did for your storyboard, but I did it in a different software. So what I'm focusing on when making this animatic is mostly just emotion and timing like we've discussed throughout this entire video. Uh, I'm not worrying about the detailed animation, I'm not worrying particularly about you know even drawing the characters particularly well. Uh, I'm purely focusing on getting the emotion right. And one thing you'll notice here when I'm drawing Timmy is I start with different parts of his body depending on what he's doing in the shot. 
this is a technique called um, starting with the leading action. So if the leading action of him is, you know, biting open this box with his teeth, then I'll start with his face. If the leading action is him reaching out for the toy, then I'll start with his arms because that's the driving force of that action. And it just helps you um, kind of put together your character in a way that has a bit more energy, or at least that's what I've found. When it comes to um, transitioning from one shot to another, and you run out of you know background if you haven't drawn enough don't worry too much you'll notice in a few steps here that as i transition and move these backgrounds around i'm having to copy and paste the sky you know the clouds the sun all that sort of thing just to get it to work in the animatic stage that doesn't matter if it works it works and you can always come back and tidy up later on if you need to even simple things like just taking this background and adding some motion blur to it for when timmy's flying through the air rather than drawing a new background the whole point is you're getting a point across. You're not making something beautiful. And with that said, let's take a look at the finished thing. Okay, Timmy, enjoy your bath. Don't splash around too much. Oh, grow your own dino, friend. Just add water. I shall call him Mr. Stunky. Okay, so there you have it. Make sure you've subscribed and you've rung the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode where we talk all about backgrounds and how to work with them in your animations. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. I've really enjoyed making it. So thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you next time on Tip Touch. Absolutely colossal thank yous to my level two and above members without whom this channel would certainly not be possible and certainly not as long lived as it has been. So thank you very much. You can join the Tip Tart Zone as well by clicking that join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.